checking out the Goal Conda Skate Park. We're in Brooklyn. What a great use of space under a highway. Do you know what highway is above us, Chris? This is uh, BQE, Brooklyn Queens Expressway. Nice, nice. This is just so cool. And we came on the perfect day because it's wet and muddy. So we are not blocking any skaters. Uh, we're checking out the Reese and Miller load. This is the speed version, HS. And then what was the, the? The touring. The touring. Okay, okay. This is pretty sweet setup here. Uh, not completely stock. Chris has upgraded a little bit. We've got the child seat up front. You can see this padded back. I think it's a five point harness. A little bench seat right there, washable. It's Velcro, it comes out. These low walls, otherwise this would just be completely open on the side. And that makes it so you could take the seat out, pile up a bunch of gear and it won't slosh out. And then that, that rear rack here. Actually, there are so many accessories and options with this thing. I, I, I think I'm gonna cut back. We're gonna take some time at the shop. Uh, he owns Propel Bikes, which is right here in Brooklyn. Let me check out these bikes. Uh, all week we've been looking at yeah. Reese and Mueller. So I just, I wanna, I wanna make sure we get everything because this does come in a few different versions. So we are out of the rain, back at the shop, and this is what I consider cargo corner. Look at all these cargo bikes. Uh, we were just out on this one, the Paxter. It's got the really long kind of narrow bucket on the front. Here's our load and it's a little bit wider, you know, just beautiful on this wall. I, I just kind of need to see this other bike over here, Chris. This one's not electric, right? This is just the, what is it, the Birdie? That's right, yeah, this is the original bike that Risa Mueller designed and started the company with in, in the early 90s. Full this suspension folding bike, right? Yeah, and they, they talked about, uh, in those early days, cushioned cycling, which was like all their bikes were gonna have full suspension, and then, then they started launching bikes that didn't have full suspension. Uh, like, I guess the Paxter over here, it only has front suspension. You might wanna put a seat post suspension or something. And then, what was that, Blue Line? Uh, Blue Label, Blue used label. to go by the name Blue Label, but now, uh, as of 2017, they brought it all together. What's the other uh, traction, or what, what's oh, the, the control technology? Control technology. So, so the Birdie, as well as the Load, uses what's called control technology, and the idea behind it is this full suspension bike, and you maintain control always. And the idea is if you hit a bump or something like that, keeps the wheel on the road safer and, yeah. and a much better ride experience. Comfort's a huge thing. You know, we're looking at the racks the other day with the Delight, and it's a suspended rack. Same thing with the load, since you have rear suspension. This isn't like four bar or super fancy mountain bike suspension, but there are three different springs that you can get uh, depending on your, your body weight. And you know, this like swing arm in the rear. And then the rack, if you had panniers or anything, you do have to, you buy that one separately, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah, so you pay a little bit more, but it's a nice rack and it's child seat compatible and stuff and it hangs there. It's much more solid than trying to do a uh, seat post mounted beam rack or something. This is, is really cool. I, can you walk me through some of the other accessories real quick? Yeah, absolutely. So we're on their website. There, there are quite a few. So there's the, the bucket. Maybe you can see that on the right, just like the bucket we're looking at here. But you, you actually have to pay extra for this wooden sidewall if you want, right? Yeah, so it's all modular, and it, depending on what your needs are, you can go, like for example, the cargo area, you have different options. You can do something for a child seat, uh, for a baby seat to put inside there. Uh, you can have the child seat attachment, which this has right now, like has the five point harnesses, so you could really uh, strap your kids <laughs> in good there. Yeah. Uh, you have the cover, you can get the child seat with the cover here as well. Uh, and then you also have these options for the sidewalls oh, cool. or with the cover, which is really great if you're using it mostly for carrying cargo. You want a little bit higher sidewalls and have, uh, you know, have a cover or keep things out of the rain and that sort of thing. That's nice. Yeah, it's cool to see all the options. Even colors. We were talking about, what is it, three or four colors? Yeah, so this one actually comes in four colors. It's really, it's, it's really great uh, to use the site. You can kind of cycle through the different colors. Uh, and then you, you also have different options. You can do different colors on the pedals wow. and the grips and everything. You can really get touch points. Uh, all, all sorts of uh, configurations and uh, it's... And it looked like those, uh, the touch points, the pedals and the grips were maybe even, I don't know if you have to pay extra for them. It didn't look like it. it was no, just... no extra charge and it's, it's, a, it's a slightly different pedal. Um, it's a little bit more of a sporty pedal. Uh, a bit wider, yeah, yeah, but plastic with nubs. 
versus these alloy core. Hey, look at this is perfect. Same company, Salt Plus. And it's pretty cool because you could do some pretty interesting accents there, you know. So huh. uh, it does look nice. This is actually the bike I've been riding a lot. So first, actually, <laughs> really? these two. It's it's kind of my color, and and uh, you know, I love the look at the wall. Well, right? So. Yeah, this is part of the yeah. the fun that you've got going on in your shop here. Well, thank you for walking through those. How about the models? Because yeah, you know, a lot of their bikes give you. Yeah, I'm tr I'm only reviewing the speed version touring right now, which means it has you know, a cassette, this is 10 speed Shimano Dior XT, and it's got the speed performance line motor, but. Yeah, this, this is also available with the CX motor. So basically all the same specs, otherwise just with the CX motor. For high torque. For high torque, okay. and it's 20 mile an hour top speed. Okay. Alternatively, you could get the NuVinci with the chain on, on this model, but you can get that with the 20 mile an hour version or the 28 mile an hour high speed version. Interesting. I w maybe it was about strength because they've got a rear swing arm and the way it's designed on this one, the chain is actually above the chain stay. On a lot of their other bikes, the chain stay, it, it like over here, you can see that the chain passes below the, the frame component. So they would have to do a cutaway and that might change the strength characteristics and stuff with the rack. I guess I can't speak for them, but these guys are pretty good engineers and, I, and you've got a clear slap guard here, so you're not gonna chip that beautiful, beautiful color. And thank you, is this the delight we were looking yeah, at Yeah, so part of the challenge with the full suspension bike, you really have to have a pretty unique design in order to accommodate a belt oh, yeah. with the full suspension, yeah. which is something that they only did on the delight, at least for this year. Um, but it was a, it's a pretty big feat and they did a great job with it, but they're kind of, maybe they'll integrate some of that technology in the future in some of the other bikes. We were talking about that. See how they have this little cog, or I don't know what you'd call that. It's like a pulley wheel or something, and it raises and tensions the belt so it goes above uh, the swing arm there. So yeah, I don't know, great stuff. We can get back out there. Just fun to, to have a reference point when we're looking at, at the laptop, and uh, this is great. Okay, pretty cool. I hope that helped clarify things. So we're back. I just wanted to do a walk around and, and talk about what makes this bike special and what some of the components are. So, you know, obviously a full suspension cargo bike, you know, th this this suspension up front, do you remember it's like 50 millimeter travel? 50 millimeter, yeah. It's a little bit more basic. There's no lockout or anything. I believe this is a coil suspension. You do have preload adjust, but it, it works quite well. You do get noticeable cushion and that's not just for you as a rider but also for your gear or your precious cargo if you got kids up there and you know that's neat to have a suspension fork really tight handling you can see the steering rod right here that goes all the way under I've been doing just fine on this thing going at pretty high speed a lot of times with cargo bikes you put weight in the front or whatever and it just it feels a little precarious some of them have hub motors and everything but to be using the Bosch mid-drive system brings a lot of that weight back out of the way. The battery is really well protected within the frame right there. And then this rear suspension, this is a little bit more basic, X-Fusion and kind of a spring there. As I mentioned, you can you can replace those springs. I believe it's like a zero to 60 pounds, 60 to 90 and 90 plus, depending on the rider. And we were talking about the weight capacity of this bike earlier. Do you remember the max rider weight? Yeah, rider weight is 260 pounds and for the cargo area is about 220 pounds. Okay, yeah, so, you know, you've got quite a bit of capacity on this bike and it just feels solid for something that's full suspension that has two pivot points back there and then up front, it feels good. Just one point on the rear suspension. Yeah. When you had mentioned it, it's actually kilograms. So it's like 60 oh. kilograms. Or it's more or less about <laughs> double that. So it's like 120, 120 pounds to I think like 180 or so. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm so used, I'm like 135 pounds. So sometimes I'm like, well, I get the big spring for once, but maybe not. <laughs> maybe I'm in the middle of mid-level spring. Is that what you have? Do you have the mid spring here? Yeah, it comes standard with kind of the mid-level spring. Mid-level, okay. Okay, very cool. And I love the color. This is the cyan, uh, just looks really bright. Of course, there are some black accents with the motor, with the battery, the fenders. These are plastic. I believe these are SKS again. And then we've got a uh, Bush and Mueller integrated rear light and an integrated headlight. This headlight's pretty cool. It's got like a, a kind of a slice along the top so it doesn't shine up into people's eyes. It's supposed to just go down. And that's part of the, 
you know, I think the legal system in Germany where they say, you know, you're not supposed to be blinding your fellow cyclists. So we're benefiting from their great technology here. We've got a 20 uh, inch front wheel with the Schwabi Big Ben Plus and that nice performance line green guard puncture protection as well as a reflective sidewall to keep you seen, keep you safe. Same on the rear, reflective sidewall. I believe both of these have Alex rims, the MD30, so 30 millimeters uh, wide, a little bit wider for strength. Big Ben Plus, as I was saying, I'm trying to see here, 26 by 2.15, so a little bit, a little bit fatter than some tires. That's going to add to the suspension, give you some comfort, also stability, traction. Uh, Back to the handling, felt felt really good. And the steering, you can see down here, there's that single steering rod. It's very tight. It's not rattling or wiggling. And I love that when you turn, that headlight points to where you turn. The lights are set up to automatically be on at all times for safety. That's another European requirement for speed pedal X. Chris has told me that the shops can actually turn that on off in the US and give it back to you, give the control we back. Actually, yeah, we actually happen to turn this one on just as before we're updating it. So. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know, there's that light button right here. So you'd, you'd have to press that to go on and off. But Chris was saying he just updated this one with the software. That's something that dealers can do. And he was using this little micro USB port on the side of the display. But you can also use that as the consumer, as owner of this bike, if you mount your cell phone up here, or maybe you've got an MP3 player or some other electronic device, you can plug it in. So that's a really great upgrade. Another upgrade, you know, we're looking at the Power Pack 500. It's a pretty sweet battery pack. It's the same form factor and almost the same weight as the older Power Pack 400. But now, you know, you've got 25% more capacity. You can go further. And a bike like this with efficient tires and stuff, even though the bike is, it's like 73 pounds, what we were weighing it at before, it's a little heavier. It's still a very efficient bike and you can get great range. We were estimating like 25 to 50 miles per charge, given that this is a speed pedelec. And we're trying to, you know, the, when you go over 20 miles per hour, efficiency drops off a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. Definitely something to be mindful of. And uh, yeah, the faster you go, the, the, more, the less range you're generally gonna see. But the more fun slash time you're gonna, I mean, you Without know. a doubt, and that's, that's a great <laughs> reason to get a second battery, you know? So. That's what we were going to. Okay, can you show me where the second battery is supposed to mount, Chris? Yeah, so the second battery would actually mount right here. Uh, and, and it just kind of goes upright here and, uh, I mean, you could, if you wanted to, carry an extra battery with you, and you can always swap it swap out. It. But the nice thing about having a second battery is it is it actually integrates to the system. There's its own port. It's a lock in place, and and it drains both of the batteries kind of a little bit at a time, both of them at the same time. So. Right. So one isn't getting like super cycled, which the batteries only have a set amount of cycles before they tend to like need to be replaced. Right. That's right. Yeah. So by balancing out two. Uh, you you kind of get it. It's just nicer. It's nicer than other systems. I was looking at a, a trike recently from Raleigh and iZip. They both have the same trike and it had an extra slot for a battery next to the existing battery, but it, was, it wasn't like an actual interface. It just was a storage space. So to have a bike that recognizes both batteries automatically draws down the one that's the most full and then balances them is really, really cool. I'm sorry we can't show that to you, but that's another upgrade. So many options with this bike. I don't know how it came assembled, Chris, but I noticed that we've got these bolts. It's almost like this comes in two parts. So it's, I believe it's mostly for uh, for actually building the bike and that sort of thing. But actually, for for us, when it comes to us, it's actually usually assembled. It's usually assembled already. Yeah, which is it comes in a pretty big box. But <laughs> I bet. Yeah. Take a couple people to move this thing. So we were talking about the 10-speed drivetrain down here before Shimano Dior XT, a little bit higher. Uh, do you remember with this, was this uh, 20? 20 tooth for the speed pedal. 20 tooth, so. okay, yeah, probably a few teeth less for the, right. we, we don't so this know. This is the equivalent of a 52 chain ring because of the 2.5 uh, chain reduction. <laughs> that's right, every crank revolution you do is like two and a half revolutions in here and that's designed to give the motor a mechanical advantage. You can see this plastic chain ring bash guard thing. That's been nice to have. So I'm wearing jeans, it's a little colder today, and this just sloughs over that. It doesn't have a chain, a full chain cover, but you know, it's, it's a little update they did. It's kind of nice. Slap guard, as I was saying before. We've got an Abus. This is like a cafe lock where you, you pull out like this. Oh, do I push in? I push it, push, and then swivel to the side, and it would lock in so no one could move the bike. See how it blocks the spokes. 
Uh, that, I believe, is separate. It might use a separate key. Some of the other Reese and Mueller's, it's the same key for everything. So, eh, you know, that's it's a minor gripe there. Um, seat post is the same on most of the Reese and Mueller's, 34.9 millimeters, a little bit thicker. And a lot of times I'd be saying, oh, thud buster, body float or something. But this is a full suspension bike, so you really don't need that. What's cool about it though, is that it's like a 430 millimeter length on that seat post, a little bit taller. And you can see the angle, see how this is like more straight up and down and this is more angled. So the higher you go, the more reach that you get. And, and that helps to accommodate taller riders. This only comes in one size. It's about 19.5 inches from the top there, this Transex seat post clamp down to uh, the spindle that you'd be pedaling with. This is the superstar. This is what I wanted to get to. It's very similar to what we saw on, what was that bike we were looking at? The Tinker. The Tinker, yeah. It's this cool little compact bike. There's quick release going on. We've got five little pinholes, and I don't know, it was like four and a half inches of uh, up and down sliding, like telescoping stem. So that complements the seat. As the seat goes higher, the handlebars can go higher, and you can even angle it forward and back, I believe. Do you, will you open yep. that up, Chris? Sure. I'm gonna come around to the other side. Yeah, it is, it is. So see this little lever there. Yeah, so so now that this is this is loose, it's still locked in pace. This is a safety mechanism. So basically you unlock it and then there are certain pivot points which it can lock in place. Do it. You can see there's a little pin here. Yeah. And basically you want that pin to kind of to lock into certain positions. And it There's can even go like all the way back. It, it can. Look at that, can for storage. Like that. And you can also turn the handlebars sideways. Yeah, you can unbutton that, well. pivot those sideways, so it'd be really compact. Just a very cool, this bike, the load, compared to, what was the other one called? I keep forgetting. The Paxter. The Paxter. That's their other cargo bike, it's, it's longer. It's a little narrower. This one sticks out a little bit more, but you get the capacity for two kids up front. I was telling Chris, like, you know, watch your kids. If, if they're holding this rail and you pass by something, this doesn't have the guard the way that some of the rear mounted cargo bikes do. They, they have the hoopty from, I don't know, Yuba, an extra cycle. They, it's sort of a, the kids could hold on, but they're on like an inner bar. So if you hit something, it wouldn't, it wouldn't smush their fingers. This bike, you don't really have that. So I would say have your kids keep their fingers and everything inside the area and just keep an eye on it. Cause yeah, it's a little bit more vulnerable. The upside is you can actually ride and look down on your kids like this and you can, you know, Hey, stop hitting your sister or whatever the situation is and ring the bell. Don't make me ring this bell again. You know, whatever. I guess I'm just, I don't have kids, but I, I don't want their fingers smushed either. So anyway, I think we've covered a lot of the bike uh, in terms of functionality. It's great that you could put a car seat, have an infant back there, have your toddlers up front or whatever, your, your cargo, your books, great brakes on this. We've got Tektro Ariga Comp, 160 millimeters up front. 203 millimeters in the back. So a lot of your weight as the rider is gonna to be towards the back of the bike and even the motor systems and everything, it's a little more rear. In some ways, I'm used to seeing bigger disc brakes on the front, but as a cargo bike, I, I mean, maybe that's just what they could fit because this is a smaller fork and, and a smaller wheel. In any case, hydraulic disc brakes are great. Uh, very responsive, you don't need to squeeze quite so hard. We've got, you know, three or four finger levers and uh, a little bit of an adjustable reach. So you could bring this in if you're wearing gloves or if you're someone who has a smaller hand, smaller fingers. Love that. Big fan of the Ergon ergonomic grips. They just feel nice and comfortable. I'm someone who would bring the handlebars way up high and have this nice upright ride. We've got the look-in from Selly Royale. It's a gel saddle. A little bit up angled right now. I don't know who was riding this before me, but it's kind of funny. The bell that I was having fun with a moment ago, the pedals are a little bit basic. These are like aluminum core with rubber tread. And, uh, you know, back to the, the options. I might, I might go with those bigger plastic ones, but if you slip on those, they can cut your, you know, scrape you up a little bit more. They're not metal at least, but they're a little bit tougher. Quick release, front and rear, as long as you don't get the new Vinci. The new Vinci has like a bolted axle in the right. rear, but these have quick release. So if you needed to do maintenance, if you got a flat tire, or if you took it to a shop, they're gonna be able to help you. And just the fact that this is a more traditional drivetrain, yes, it's an electric bike, but all that stuff's here. And the regular parts of the bike are all just as you would expect. 
They, they're not a problem, nothing to be intimidated about. And these Bosch battery packs, they've been selling these for years now in the United States. You could even use the 400 watt hour pack if you wanted, if you had that. Maybe you could even get the adapter interface for the second pack and rotate through several. It seems like a pretty open system, one that's being supported for a long time. Chris, you know, your shop is predominantly carrying Bosch now. Do you want to comment on why or what your experience has been? Yeah, it's just, we've had a great experience. The reliability is really, uh, we haven't found any system that compares to that or or the way that it performs really. Mm -hmm. uh, but probably one of the greater details is just uh, the commitment to the category. We just feel confident that, you know, 20 years from now, you want to continue to support your bike, you'll have support. And I have some concerns about some of the smaller companies that they'll continue to be able to support their battery packs and their motor systems because yeah. a lot of bikes have a lot of proprietary parts. So, yeah. you know, they, I, I don't know that all the companies are thinking so forwardly about that. And, and I would hate for our customers to be left in the dark like that. So. When Reese and Mueller has been making bikes for over a decade, I don't know how long they've been doing electric bikes, but they're they dominate in, in a lot of ways. They're a bigger, more trustworthy company. And someone who's gonna spend 6,679 bucks for something like this, that's how much the one we're looking at here costs. That could be their car. And you know, like I was saying with the tires, they're upgraded, the safety is there, the better drive system, because you need to be able to get the kids to school or get your groceries or whatever. That, you know, that's why this is, I'm, I'm just saying that's why you, spend more for a bike like this because there are some cargo bikes that are a little cheaper sure nothing against them but this is this is the higher end uh what we're looking at Without a doubt. um okay I, have i missed anything about the frame that that you think i should call out or should i get into how the bike works like with yeah, the control i think that's mostly it you know uh, we talked about the suspension and the control technology about the safety and and um yeah it's uh yeah, it is a two-wheel cargo bike too. That's something, you know, you do see three-wheel cargo bikes sometimes with a bucket up front. Sure. Uh, what's the one you have that's like that? The Butchers and Bicycles. Butchers and Bicycles, a great bike. And that one actually pivots, so you turn and it yeah. kind of steers. Well, this is a two-wheel bike, so it's gonna be a little bit lighter, a little narrower than that one. Yes. And you're still gonna have the nimble ride. Like, this bike does ride really well. It feels more like a, a bicycle and uh, your brother, Kyle, was riding this the other day and we saw him on the street. He's cruising along. It looked it looked really fun and, and fast too. Yeah, this is this is definitely a favorite around the shop. Uh, it's a bike that I use quite often personally if I'm going grocery shopping or on- Or laundry, didn't laundry. you tell me you do laundry? Yeah, I mean, yeah. recently, uh, about three months ago, I got rid of my car, so we're down to no cars in the house. Wow, and, congrats. And so, you know, this this is basically my bike with a trunk, you know, and, and in a place like Brooklyn, this is all you need, and it's a lot better than having a car, frankly. I don't have to worry about parking. You got all those parking else, tickets. So. <laughs> is yeah, that yeah, why? I didn't even talk about that. I mean, it's just, uh, That's yeah. awesome. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in uh, to how, how the system works. Once the battery is charged and locked to the frame, you don't even need the key, it just clicks in and then it's locked. You could charge it on or off, by the way. There's the, there's the plug. Uh, once that's all set up, you just come here to the display and you press the power button. And this does swivel, so I'm gonna try to make it so you can see that. Look at that, look how nice that looks. We've got five little ticks on a battery bar, speed in the middle, a bunch of trip stats below, and then over here there's this little graph, and it actually goes up and down depending on how much power the motor's putting out, and then there's this little chart that as you arrow up, it goes to Eco, which is the lowest level of assist. Tour, that's where I ride most of the time because it's a good balance of power and efficiency. Sport, and then Turbo. I review in Turbo because I want you to see how loud the motor is. The Bosch motor, as Chris was saying, it spins like two and a half revolutions for every crank revolution that you put in. So it's a little bit more like ree, ree. You, you hear like a high pitch thing. It's not terrible, especially if you're, a lot of times I'm reviewing mountain bikes and the tread on their tires and just the environmental sounds are way more than the motor, but it's worth calling out. And I don't think I said it before, but the motor controller system is measuring real speed, pedal crank rotation, and pedal torque. So how hard you're pushing. And that last one's key because if you really need to go and you start pushing, the motor responds very quickly. It measures those three signals a thousand times per second. Pretty cool. Okay, so here we are at the display again. There's that I button on the right, but it's replicated over here on the button pad. Easy to reach. You know, if you're driving, you're telling those kids not to hit each other, and then, you know, don't want to have to like take your hand off or screw around too much. And the Bosch and 2V display just 
it's one of my favorites for how simple it is, easy to use. So I press the I button, I go from max speed to average speed, to trip time, to odometer, to trip distance, to clock. Lots and lots of readouts there just by pressing that I. And now I'm back to range. So range dynamically tells you how far it thinks you can go based on your last three miles of riding, based on the battery capacity, and then based on the level of assist. So right now we're in turbo and it says, meh, 24 miles. The battery's pretty full. So that's that roughly equals what we were talking about a minute ago, 50 miles or 25 miles up to 50. I'm gonna arrow down to eco, the lowest level. It actually thinks we can go 65. But a lot of that depends on what speed, how fast we're going, because wind resistance, what kind of cargo. It's empty right now, right? So anyway, with you, the, this information will be dynamically calculated based on how you're riding. And that's what's so cool about it. There is a walk mode. I was struggling to figure it out before, but you press walk and then it says for walk assist, press the plus and you press it. And look at that, it does it, it works. That is so cool. Cause maybe you're trying to stabilize the bike and you've got the kids in there, but you're pushing, pushing. Now the bike can help you push. It's not just you. That's how you do it. Hit walk mode, then hold plus. Also, if you wanna go in here and change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour, you hold the reset and I to get to the menu. I just figured that out recently, super excited. I think that's it. I think maybe it's time to get on this, this bike here. Wanted to show you the light though from the front. Whoa, super bright. Okay, should we should we go, Chris? Where are we gonna go? <laughs> we had to come down steps to get here. Go in the skate park? Yeah, do, can you ride down the steps? I, I think I can. Yeah, don't hurt yourself. Yeah, I hope not. I hope <laughs> Chris not. is gonna do some daring. You're gonna get some wall rides in too? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that serious. Are you gonna go up that? Oh, okay. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That was awesome. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. That is ridiculous. Seeing the suspension. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude. Oh, we got a little bit of drag there, but not much. The, <laughs> the clearance on this thing is pretty rad. Very cool. I want to put a frame camera on. Chris is taking off. We're going to ride around the skate park. I think I might hop on and just, we can just ride this out for a minute. Yeah. This time I'm gonna shine the camera down at the motor so you can see it and hear it and, and just walk you through this. He did all that in eco mode. How you feeling, buddy? <laughs> not bad, not, <laughs> not bad. bad. This guy. Okay, so I'm on sport mode. I'm gonna hop on. It does have shift sensing. So when I shift gears, the motor's supposed to let out a little bit and not be like crunching the chain and everything. It's not a perfect system, but it's one that not a lot of mid drives even offer. So. Yeah, it's really the best in that in that regard as far as the shift sensing, my experience. Yep. It's pretty cool. Okay, Chris, I'm gonna hop on, pedal. I'm going up to turbo mode here. Don't have a lot of room to work with, but yeah, it's just, it's super, super responsive. And then the turning radius, you saw Chris earlier, it's not perfect. It's not as much as like a traditional bicycle, but it's not bad. I mean, look at that. No problem getting around the park. Pretty easy to get up above 20 miles per hour too. And we're in limited space. I'm gonna go riding further. Go 
up the stairs. Turbo, we're heading back to the shop. Or try to hit that top speed. So the bike you're on is not a speed. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. So we're good. It does have shift recommendation, so it sort of arrows you up when it recommends shifting. We're at 21 right now. 23. 26. Oh. Definitely appreciate those fenders today too. Sweet, buddy. Well, thank you so much for <laughs> risking your life earlier on some of those jumps. Uh, that is the Reese and Mueller Load Touring HS, That's right? It. Yeah. yeah. For the full written review, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Of course, as always, ride safe, have fun. <laughs>